they have an cl energy class. Part of their class is to go into a house. Uh, they take measurements of the house, and then they bring those measurements back to computer program um, and actually model the entire house on, a, on this computer program. They brought this, they set up an experiment which basically started a suction on the entire house and then they were able to sort of detect where the insulation wasn't uh, working properly. We have a bunch of uh, insulation being blown through from our truck outside up through this, through this tube up to here and we're insulating uh, a CC professor's attic right now. And what that's, what that's gonna do is just gonna make it a lot harder for the, <clears throat> for the heat inside the house to flow out during the, during the winter months. Hopefully save him a lot on his utility bills and uh, means he has to use less fuel to heat his house. So good for the environment, good for the pocketbook. It's a win-win. And so then what they do is they go through and do a cost-benefit analysis based on you know, what sort of home improvement uh, projects can they do to uh, make the house more efficient. And the research really involved uh, using the energy audit process and follow-up retrofits to teach the scientific method of inquiry to students. And so that's the educational component of it. And then the other component is trying to make the energy audit and retrofit process more efficient itself. Uh, it's almost entirely student-run, so, um, which is, I think, a great opportunity. It gets the students actively involved in the process uh, rather than just learning it in theory in the class. They actually go out have this project, and then they go to the Home Depot and get these materials to make the improvements. The lab was purchased roughly 10 years ago, and originally it was, purposed, it was purchased as just that, a, a mobile lab, a lab that goes out in the field and does uh, wet chemistry work out in the field. Uh, we had a gas chromatograph in there, and uh, they would do soil analysis and air analysis and so forth. and then. Somewhere uh, after a couple of years of that, it evolved into uh, housing the biodiesel operation on campus. And we had a biodiesel reactor, and we have tanks that hold waste vegetable oil from local restaurants that we would convert to biodiesel and run the truck off the biodiesel. The photovoltaic system, the renewable energy system on there, there's photovoltaic panels on the roof, and they regenerate a bank of deep cycle batteries and the deep cycle batteries then go through an inverter and we can run any AC equipment, uh, be it an instrument or like we have right now, the lights inside or the blower for the cellulose blower, any, anything we need, uh, we can run out, off of that system. We envisioned this truck as being, uh, other than the lubricating oils on it, being run totally off of renewables. We have the electricity is run off of the PV system and the fuel is biodiesel that we can produce in town and, uh, in our biodiesel reactor. And so the vehicle itself is kind of a showcase for renewable energy. And we do take it to a lot of solar home shows and, and showcase it there.